And it has been a beacon in the community and become that voice of everything that seniors are concerned about. So I'm thrilled to know they are concerned about Medicare and, uh, and knowing what the gaps are. And in October, I was able to share what the differences are between the two main sides of Medicare, both uh, the, the side that people have a Medicare supplement and then the side that they have an Advantage plan. So if you didn't see that particular presentation, please um, go back and, and watch that, or I can send it to you, or Judy can send it to you too, uh, because it's one where this is just going to be continuation of that, and you might have some questions um, for background information, so they really, these two presentations really do go hand in hand in tandem. So with that, we'll start with the first slide. And uh, so the question is, so you have Medicare, now what? So Judy's going to put that slide up there. And uh, this is based on the Medicare and you book. And as Judy and I were talking yesterday, she said, Diane, everybody pretty much gets that book when they turn 65 or they have access to that book. You have access to that book. It's put out by CMS, which is uh, the governing body for Medicare. And that particular book has unbiased information about all of Medicare. So if you're ever wondering, you know, where's the horse to get to the horse's mouth with this, that's where you go and that's where you find it. So it's pretty exciting um, when you go into the Medicare and you book because during open enrollment, which we've just come through and we'll get to that slide in a minute, what you'll see is you'll be inundated with material. And when you turn 65, you're inundated with material. And everyone always asks me, Diane, what material do I need? I said, well, you need your card if you signed up for it. And you also need the Medicare and you book. Everything else can really be thrown away because if you're working with a broker like myself, it's, it's one where they can offer you all of the different sides of Medicare and get you that information that's pertinent to you. So the one book you do want to hang on to is the Medicare and you book because we'll be referencing that today. So we'll go on to the next slide to see what else we'll be able to do today. So one of the things that I was looking at was, you know, how do we make sure that you are getting out of today what's going to save you time and money? And we're gonna review the main parts of Medicare. We're gonna define the coverage gaps in Medicare, the two sides of Medicare, and then also reveal the resources to cover those gaps and then address questions and concerns at the end. So what I would encourage you to do is to take out a piece of paper and a pen, or if you're using your phone, uh, you can go into your notes on an iPhone or um, on a non-iPhone, you can go into notes and you can just jot some things down where you have questions. And for me, I have, I've denoted that in my phone as my parking lot. That's where I park all my questions when I attend webinars. So I encourage you to do the same because I'm sure that you will have some. Sometimes my speed of speech can go up to rates of 92 miles an hour. So I am going to try and slow that down. Judy, you have all of the power that if I get going too fast, just give me one of these. Diane, slow down. <laughs> Okay. And I promise you, I will. So we'll go to the next slide. So this next slide, uh, we'll go back one. So back one from here. So yes, you can see Medicare enrollment period. It says IEP. So for those that are turning 65, you have the months before you turn 65 and you have the months after you turn 65. And that's your initial enrollment period. Really what we're looking at today is what can you do during the year after you have Medicare? But before we go into that, I really want you to see the bottom of the page there where it says, we are now in OEP and that's January 1st through March 31st. This is a wonderful time for you who have the Medicare Advantage plan. Why? because 
if for some reason you're not satisfied with it, or if you have found out you're going to have to have a surgery or a procedure or something like that, and you're worried about the costs, or maybe you're, you need more dental for the year, this is the time where you, the owner of a Medicare Advantage plan, can seek out that broker or that agent or that company and make a change. And it is okay to change it. And then it just goes in place. Um, if you made a change today, it would be February 1st. And then February, it'd be a March 1st that it would be effective. And then, you know, in March, it would be April 1st. And then after that, you really can't change anything. You have to wait until the next year for open enrollment again. And that open enrollment is actually um, October 15th through December 7th. So if you have a question about when those enrollment periods are, and also if there's any special enrollments that can happen during the year, just um, let me know because the special enrollments really uh, are for people that have both Medicare and Medicaid. There's some times throughout the year that you can actually change plans or maximize the plan that you have. Um, the other one is the category for veterans. So if you're getting uh, VA or and using that for drug plan, or if you're doing a TRICARE for life, um, there are some programs that are just for you. And every month you can uh, start those programs. And some of those are the programs that are advertised on television. You know, those Joe Namath commercials where they say, oh, there's a give back. And you're going, do I get a give back? Well, veterans do. They can, they can access that. It's available to them. So, uh, like I said, that all comes under special enrollment. So if you are confused about when is an initial enrollment, and that's for a 65 year old turning 65, first time on Medicare also, or um, you're confused about special enrollments or you're wondering what is this OEP thing, that's an open enrollment right now for those that have Medicare Advantage plans. So uh, with that being said, let's go on to the next slide. So you can see here, let's review. I have used these icons before when I spoke, um, this was back in October. And I want you to know you're gonna see these icons throughout the presentation. The first one that you're gonna see is under original Medicare. To have that, you would have part A, which is primarily your hospital, part B, which is uh, your medical. And then you can see for Medicare Advantage, which is called part C, part C stands for combination in my land. So hopefully that'll help you too. But you're combining your A for hospital, your B for doctors or medical. And then most of the plans do offer a D and they also call them an MAPD. Well, what in the world? Alphabet soup, right? So we have MAPD means a Medicare Advantage plan with Part D. And then you can see separately the Medicare prescription drug plan. And that is um, something that you would get separately if you had a original Medicare, an A and a B. So I highlighted the D part because sometimes that can be glossed over when you're reviewing everything during open enrollment and you're really looking, typically agents, brokers, they look at the confines of that traditional Part D plan that you would get through Medicare and they will look at Medicare.gov and just go in, add all the drugs in there. And then it's a matter of just seeing out of all those plans and in South Carolina and St. Louis, for example, there's 27 companies that offer the Part D plans with Medicare. So how in the world do you, do you choose? Well, Medicare.gov allows you to enter the information pertinent to your drugs, um, your dosage amount, when you would get them refilled, how often, and also do you take a generic or do you take a brand name? So let's go on to the next slide.
So with the Part D plan, you have a yearly deductible, and then you also typically some of them some of them don't, uh, but typically they do if it's applicable. And then there's co-payments and co-insurance, and it varies by plan. So I'm just going to kind of read this to you and then unpack it. So the the plan is going to pay a regular co-payment and co-insurance, and you would get to a coverage gap. And the coverage gap for 2021 is 4130. So that's $4,130 that you spent and the company that you have your insurance through for your Part D drug plan. I love that. That says D, D for drugs, right? We can remember that. You would spend $4,130. $4,130. Now, then you're in the coverage gap. What happens then? You pay 25% more for your brand name drugs and you pay 25% for the covered uh, generic drugs typically. And then after you, not, not, not the company, because the first one is you and the company together. The last part is to get out of that gap you and you alone have to pay $6,550. Sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? So what do we do? And how do we make that better? Now, I did put in there that some people have an adjustment called an IRMA, and sometimes it's because they just haven't had their Part D when they needed to have their Part D. Let's go to the next plan or the next slide here. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have plan formularies and the list of covered drugs, and you have a range in drugs in every category. Like I said, generic and brand names. So that's a little bit of a review of what I've already said. And you can choose the plan that you join and the costs vary by plan. And there's extra help for those people that have a Part D plan. But let's get to this next question. Next slide. Hopefully everyone's pausing to have a drink of their choice. Mine is water. <laughs> so it says, did you know that every drug in America has to have a drug discount program? The trick is finding it. What? This is revolutionary to hear this. I was at the National Association of Health Underwriters for their national conference this past year, which was of course, virtual, and it was one. Diane, we lost you. Uh, I can't hear you, Diane, I can't hear you. Hang on for just a second, everyone. I think Diane might be having some technical difficulties. Yeah. Her in. I, Diane? Yeah, I got yeah. it. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, that's okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. She just started to get some weather here. So, okay. Um, okay, so we are looking at the Part D costs there. And then uh, the next, next slide right here, we'll go on to the next slide. And it says, <laughs> you know that every drug in America has a discount program. And the trick is finding it. So let's find it. Let's go to the next slide. So all of these resources, this particular program that you are listening to today, you're going to receive this and you're going to receive this in your email. If you, if you choose to, Judy will send it to you and you'll get a copy because these are all links that I provide all of my clients, excuse me, and it's one where 
these particular links are going to hopefully save you some money. If you haven't heard of GoodRx, which is about in the all towards the, the bottom of that selection, you can go on, put in the information about the drug, and then you can see all the pharmacies around you and save you the most money. So for example, I put in uh, the other day a torvastatin. And for whatever reason, you could get a torvastatin for $3. Um, in the area that I was looking in, I was actually doing a search for uh, the Arkansas area of Bentonville and for a client down there that was referred to me. And she said, Diane, I want to see if I can get these for a lower price. I said, why? What's going on? She said, I want to do everything that I can do to avoid going into that donut hole. And I said, oh, my gosh, who told you that you could pay your yourself. You could pay out of pocket for this. And she said, well, I, I, I kind of figured it out. I was hoping you could, you could verify that I can do that. I said, you can do that. You don't have to use your Medicare card to pay for the drugs. You can choose to pay for drugs out of your own pocket. So if they're cheaper than your formulary, then it's worth looking into. So some of the strategies that I use throughout the year is to look and see when clients get a huge drug, one of them was getting a drug that was $6,000 just for the one drug, and she was going to go into the donut hole and then out of the donut hole. And I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Let's just take this and let's just go through and see if we can save you some money. And we looked at Blink Health and Honey Bee Health and RX Outreach and RX Cut and Good RX and Needy Meds. Now, the reason why I can mention all of these companies to you is because I am not paid by any of these companies. When it comes to later in the presentation, and I tell you the ideas and the implementation from the insurance industry, I will be mentioning absolutely no names because I want you to get this information completely educational and unbiased. But on these, because I don't get any kind of kickback or I'm not paid, I'm able to give you these free resources. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to not pay anything for the drug. It means that you don't have to pay anything to access the prices that these particular resources have. So when you look at, uh, for example, 90 day meds in Canada, some of my clients will say, well, Diane, I don't, uh -uh, I don't want to get the international drugs. I, I don't feel comfortable with that. That's fine. You don't have to. It's just one where it's an idea. So the other thing that you can look at too is a Google search with the name of your drug. And then you put in generic coupons, discounts, trials, Canada and international after it. And you're going to come up with a plethora of choices that will that will allow you to see, is this going to make sense? Now, typically, you'll find who the manufacturer is that way by doing that. And then when you find out who that manufacturer is, you can go straight into that manufacturer's discount. And that's where you find those hidden discounts. Now, here's the kicker. When you get in there, they'll say, well, if you're on Medicare, some of them say this, if you're on Medicare, well, you can't apply. Yes, you can. They can tell you no. And then you can ask the supervisor after you've talked to a rep and you've said, oh, you're great, you're wonderful, to the rep, they're going to want you to tell that to the supervisor. So you talk to the supervisor and you say, hey, I see that you have this criteria and you say that it's not going to be for a person on Medicare or you say that it's not going to be for a person of this means or this much financial, you know, wherever you are on that financial scale. But the question you ask them is, do you have enough participants in your study to offer those that program? And sometimes they say no depending upon what time of year it is. And so they have, some of them have grants that fund those. So you always wanna ask and you always wanna find out, you know, and just delve in and ask some questions and say, hey, when should I call back? If they say no at that time, it's worth it to ask. If you don't ask, you can't get a no. But if you ask, 
who knows? You might get a yes, which would be really great. So the other thing I want to tell you is my friend, Marty Portnoy, he owns a company called You Save on Med. So you're that person that goes, ah, I don't want to do anything international with drugs. You can call Marty. He vets the drugs. So they typically come through the UK and then he's the one that takes all the legalese out of it um, to distribute that drug to you, typically at a much lower rate. Some of the other things that aren't on here that you can do, you can also look at compounding your drugs. If you just tweak it just a little bit, you teensy tightsy bit with your doctor and talk to your doctor about this. Your doctor might be able to order it from a specialty pharmacy. And sometimes when you get your particular specialty for you at the specialty pharmacy, it's much, much cheaper than a brand name drug or a specialty drug on that particular level. Uh, so try that out. The other thing for diabetics, oh my goodness, this is so wonderful. North Coast Med, met them at a conference a couple of years ago. All 300 brokers went in and got all the news about the, the new plans. What did Diane do? I went around and talked to all the people that were there asking all sorts of questions on how I could help my clients save money. And one of the folks that I met was from North Coast Med and they're in uh, Carlsbad, uh, California. What they'll do is they'll send out uh, diabetic supplies for free. Uh, how many they send out is dependent upon your case. You just have to call them. So it has been wonderful for some people, you know, especially during the pandemic that couldn't get out to the doctor's office and couldn't get out to the pharmacy and the, the particular company was able just to really come through. So definitely add that as a resource um, for any, any of you that have diabetes or any of you that have friends with diabetes. And there's more where that came from because one of the things that I did, oh my goodness, to save one of my clients money was she said, Diane, I've got to talk to the manufacturer. My, my doctor's not going to have samples anymore. I said, oh, what company is it? We were able to go on LinkedIn and find out who the rep was in the St. In the St. Louis area, called the rep. And I said, do you want a relationship with this doctor? They're needing some more samples. And just so happened that, uh, that this client was one of the one of those patients of his that needed those samples. So sometimes the universe works out in that way, not always, but it's, it's nice to know there's other strategies. So hopefully I didn't just blow your mind with all of this. I hope that uh, you now know there's, there's other ways to do things. And if you're brave enough to do it, we can certainly take a look or you can certainly take a look at it for yourself. All right, let's go on to the next thing. So we have here, um, let's look at the gap of original Medicare with a supplement. Now we're going to shift gears. So today uh, we're going to look at the, we just looked at the RX possibilities. Uh, this one is uh, centered on rehab. The next one's going to be centered on Medicare extras. The next one's going to be centered on a dental vision and hearing. And then the biggest gaps, which are home health care, long-term care, and the big C, which is of course, cancer. So let's look at this one. Original Medicare, just keep in mind we're on the original Medicare side when we're having this part of the conversation. So those of you that have a Medicare Advantage, doesn't apply to you. But for those of you who have original Medicare, A and B, and a supplement, this does apply. Let's go to the next slide. Part B, medical insurance helps cover medical necessary items are and not limited to and could be, you know, portion of these things, doctor services, outpatient medical, clinical labs and tests, uh, durable medical equipment, um, up to a level. There's, it's not always covered to the extent that we want it to be. Uh, it's about $4,000 right now to get a lift in uh, the bi-state area of Missouri and uh, also Illinois. And the lift that I'm talking about is from one floor to the other without a turn. A turn means that it comes from one platform and then it turns 
up to uh, the second level. So it's a, it's right around $4,000. Uh, Medicare is not covering that uh, right now. Uh, maybe in the future, we can cross our fingers. And then diabetic testing supplies, they're supposed to cover it, but sometimes you know during COVID, like I said, it, there's been some trouble with, um, with some companies, some real challenges getting the supplies out. And in a timely manner, I think it's just our postal system, guys. I just think that's what's going on. So, and then uh, preventative services like the flu shots, yearly wellness, and then home health care. But I should say we're going to go over exactly uh, the home health care and what it does and does not do. So let's go to the next slide. This is what you have to keep in mind. So if you have a Medicare supplement, one of those part alphabet soup. It could be plan, uh, I guess it was a plan F was popular and now plan G seems to be popular, plan N is popular. All of those types of, of lettered plans with your part A and part B, listen up. So rehab, skilled nursing facility. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, it offers short-term rehab in a skilled nursing facility. If you have original Medicare with a supplement or Medicare Advantage, custodial care is not covered. That means you don't have that person helping you in and out of the shower, that type of thing. And we're gonna come back to that a little bit later. But here's the real kicker. If you have an original Medicare with a supplement, pay attention. When you are hospitalized as inpatient, you're covered under Part A. When you're hospitalized as observation, I'm going to say it again. When you're hospitalized as observation, meaning they do not know what code to give you. There's all these things called DRGs, diagnostic regulations. And so they have over 400 of them that they can choose. And they are trying to get it to where if they code you with that, you're going to have outcomes like all the other people they coded, or that hospital is going to be in the spotlight, um, not for a good reason, to see that it's consistent. And they can go back a uh, long time and look and see how consistent that hospital has been. So listen up, we have, when you're hospitalized as inpatient, you're covered under part A, thank goodness. Because if you're there for three days, three nights, and then you can go to rehab and it's paid for. But when you're hospitalized under observation, covered under part B. And when you go to go to observation, then, uh, Judy, are you still able to see me? Judy? Yes, I can see you. you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I just want to make sure because I had another call come in. Sorry, guys. I thought I, I thought I, um, actually muted everybody from coming in. Who, who knows what I did? <laughs> yeah, I we can I'll see you later. <laughs> yes, we can see you. Who knows? Okay. So when you have observation designation, it can be expensive for those with a Medicare supplement. Uh, when transitioned to rehab and skilled nursing, because you are, you're then your hospitalization was you, they, had any, they didn't have a code for it. Um, they, they're going to have you pay 26000 And oftentimes that money is paid up front. So that was in a report by Dan Rather. Um, it was unraveled through uh, CBS News and also in NBC Nightly News. And it showed several different cases across America. And then back in 2016, it had affected over 2 million people already. And back in 2016, it wasn't happening in the bi-state area of Missouri and Illinois, but now it has. So you really do have to pay attention to it. And when you're in the hospital, what you have to pay attention to is when is that physical therapist coming to evaluate you for the rehab facility. And typically that mile marker 
that code is that you'll walk in three days. You got to convince them you're going to walk in three days. And it, because if you don't, that's typically when they do this observation designation. Because if you were to boomerang back into the hospital for the same reason, they don't get paid for any of that. So, so just know that the best thing for you to do when you go into the hospital is to push for that inpatient stay for a, a regulation that comes under a DRG and you get a code for that. But if you don't do it, let's look at the next, the next slide. You could pay. So you ask yourself, well, okay, so I have Medicare. Well, then who pays for this rehab? That's where the private industry of insurance has come through and said, you can get a plan that will pay for rehab if you just want to have a plan do that. So anybody that has that left-hand side that we're looking here, that part A hospital, the part B for medical, the D plan, and then the Medigap plan, that's the perfect person to just have a rehab plan so you're not out $26,000 or more to pay for it yourself. That would be a horrible thing for you, for you to be um, having to do. Uh, I know that it's happened and it's much better when you have a separate um, insurance policy. And there's plenty of companies out there, about seven of them that are worth their salt, have A plus, A minus, A plus ratings. And, um, and it's, it doesn't break the bank to do it. So, so when we look at these two main sides, again, what you're wanting to look at here is in red on the side with original Medicare, at the bottom, it says it doesn't include, include the extras. And then the right-hand side, when you have Medicare Advantage, it does include extras. Well, what are the extras? Let's look at this next slide. So the extras here, I'm asking that question, what are the extras? So we have extras not included. Once you have your Medigap plan or also called a Medicare supplement on that left-hand side that we just looked at, you are now paying out of your pocket for dental, vision, hearing, over-the-counter, gym membership, meal delivery and transportation, on and on and on and on. But those are the ones that most people talk about. Why? Because on the right-hand side, people that have a Medicare Advantage plan, they have some dental, they have some vision, they have some hearing, they have an over-the-counter program, most of them do nationwide, and you have anywhere from $25 to $99 every three months that you can spend basically going to an online pharmacy, but it's not for drugs, it's for all the other products like supplements and uh, blood pressure cuff and that kind of thing. Gym membership, lots of people have heard of Renew, lots of people have heard of Silver Sneakers, um, and it allows you to have the membership anywhere that they would take it nationwide. Meal delivery, and some of them offer transportation. Now, it just depends on the plan. So the three that we're gonna really, really look at are the dental and the vision and the hearing. And what I'm about to tell you might really surprise you. So before we read these statistics, I want you to know that you can have more than one plan when it comes to dental, vision, and hearing. So you have, let's say you have a plan that you already have vision, you already have dental, but you need more. Guess what? You can get more. And in most states, you can get the plan the day before you need it. Just don't spend the money and then call and say, I need that plan. You got to call me or the company or your broker or your agent the day before you need it and, and before you spend any money and before you get that procedure done. So that can go into place and say you can save money. So almost two thirds of Medicare beneficiaries, that's 65 percent, nearly 37 million people do not have dental coverage. Well, they also don't know because most brokers won't tell you you can get it and you can have your stuff done. And you know what? It's up to you when you cancel it. 
it's up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to you. So almost, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And almost one in five Medicare beneficiaries who use dental services spent more than a thousand dollars out of their pocket on dental care. And I think right now it is usually, you know, when you look at a dental plate and you look at uh, dental implants, oh my goodness, it's so expensive. So I don't think that they were looking at people that were having that, those kinds of services done. But did you know, again, that you can have more than one plan for dental vision and hearing insurance? And yes, you can. You can ask the dental billing to strategize and say, I've got this one plan, I want you to run that one first, and then plan B, and then plan C, you know, which, whichever plan you would have, and they can monkey around with that, and they can see what plan is going to be the best for you and save you the most, because you might be in network with one and out of network with the other, but to have all of those really makes sense. So I'm going to give you a, a concrete example. My dad, so last year, he said, Diane, I've got this, you know, Medicare insurance, and now I'm going to have another insurance. I'm going to have another insurance for dental. And it went from $3,600 down to $600 because he had three dental plans in place and he was only paying $120 for the three dental plans. And he dropped the other plans that he didn't need after everything was done. That's his discretion. Um, I don't encourage that, but you know, it's what he wanted to do and he was able to save a lot of money. So you can do that too. So just know you've got up to policies and you have indemnity policies up to is the amount they're going to pay for that particular service. And an indemnity means if you have that service, they're going to pay the full amount that they've assigned to it. So it's just a little bit different in how they pay something to pay attention to. Next slide. So what are the most expensive areas not fully covered by Medicare? No surprise. Home care, recovery at home, long-term care, and cancer. Now you might be saying, Diane, there are some ways that home care is covered. But I'll tell you what, when you see these statistics, you'll realize that things have really changed. So let's look at the next slide. CMS, the Center for Medicare Services, they define home health care coverage as this. When you look at the book, Medicare and You, and they say home health care is required part time and intermittent skilled services. Skilled services, that's everybody that went to college. For, for medical that is not a doctor, basically. So you're looking at RNs, LPNs, CNAs, um, particularly more LPN, uh, medical social worker, also physical therapists, occupational therapists, endoostomal therapists. It could be, um, it could also be chemotherapy at home um, and so on and so forth. Again, people that went to school for those degrees. Those are the skilled workers. So certain rules apply. Purely custodial is not covered. So that would be uh, that would be an aide, someone who's not necessarily certified, someone who's going to be doing um, the, the chore services, helping with the imprint of the home. So it could be it helping with in and out of the bath, um, helping with dressing, helping with prepare, preparation of meals or with, uh, with feeding, that kind of thing. That purely custodial um, it's doing the laundry because you need to have a, a clean space for that person to be there at home. That is also considered custodial. That's not covered uh, by, by home health care through Medicare. And hospice care is available for terminally ill patients. And the focus is on comfort and, and pain relief. So I will also be giving you another definition of hospice later down the road here. So let's go to the next slide. What does this really mean with the way that CMS is defining it? What it means is since 2013, Medicare has cut $716 billion. $716 billion. Where did it go? 
It went to start the Affordable Care Act. That's what started that in 2013. A lot of people don't know that. And in 2013, $76 billion and counting has been cut out of the Medicare home health care budget. So oftentimes when I have a client and we're talking about home health care, it's one where they'll say, well, Diane, they did so much. My gosh, they were wonderful. They did so much. And I'll say, what year was it? And they'll say, uh, 2011. Well, if it's before 2013, home care was amazing. But since then, it's just been cut and cut and cut and cut. So 2020, the cuts, the cuts have um, resulted in a loss of Medicare home care providers. So even those companies that are providing care because of the restricted reimbursement from Medicare, again, it has to do with those designations, the DRGs. It's how the Medicare can be coded. So for example, right now, typically you see only four companies per major city across America that is solely only doing Medicare reimbursement. And it was a whole bunch more before that. So a lot of them have gone to private pay only. So let's see how it's described now. You know, so my clients were saying, oh, in 2011, it was awesome. Um, and then after 2013, typically this is what you see. Medicare at home is a 21 day episode with an RN initial visit, unless you need wound care, or you need an infusion and twice a week visits for 28 minutes by the physical therapist. The funny thing is, is they have to do their paperwork within those 28 minutes. So if they like you, they're gonna stay in your house and they're gonna help you and they're going to talk to you. But if they've got something to do and another place to go, those are the ones that sit outside in their cars and get their work done. So um, so that's what happens when you drive by and you see, oh, there was such and such company and they're there, you know, just doing all their work. So otherwise they're in the house and on their 28 minutes and all the rest of the time you are on your own to, um, to take care of yourself or your family to take care of you. So you must be homebound and you must show improvement. So 70%, this was just released um, last week and 70% of all nursing homes don't believe they have the funds to make it another year. And that's due to COVID. So um, without having some funding go in to, uh, to make that a different outcome, we can see that you can deduce the amount of money earmarked for home health care from Medicare will continue to decline. And the need for funding for home health care will increase. This is a huge gap. I'm sure that you're probably your eyes are like wide open like mine are. So let's look at how does the industry of uh, insurance fill this gap? How is ancillary additional insurance? And that comes from you know, the industry of insurance filling this gap. And typically there are companies that, um, that are created to fill this gap. You don't see this coming from the same companies that are offering uh, the Medicare Advantage and uh, the Medicare supplements. They're ancillary companies, and they are all rated also, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, that type of thing. They're all publicly able to be seen, um, so you can, you can determine if that's a company you would want to do business with. And it says, you know, short-term healthcare policies that pay an up to or an indemnity. So again, I'm going to give you that definition. Up to means that is the amount of money that they will pay. And that's it for that service. And indemnity means you have the service and they pay you directly that amount of money. So plans can pay one day from day one without an elimination period. That is all the time that you have to wait before your plan goes into place. Now, my favorite, relaxed underwriting. Those of you might say, but I didn't get, I didn't qualify for long-term care. <laughs> I can't possibly get a plan. Well, 
you'd be surprised. Um, these plans that fill the gap for home health care, if you are on your journey with Parkinson's, with designation and a diagnosis or a dementia diagnosis or an Alzheimer's diagnosis, and you can still do all your activities of daily living, bathing, dressing, toileting, transferring, continence, and eating, and you're not in a nursing home, assisted living, or in the hospital, that's relaxed underwriting typically. And so the health questions are not as stringent as long-term care and life insurance. And you might still be able to qualify to get the insurance policy, which is news to most people when I when I share that with them, because they're usually very reluctant and, and shy and afraid that, that they wouldn't qualify or that it would be too expensive, that it would change their lifestyle. It doesn't change anyone's lifestyle. You don't buy insurance to to, to pay for something that you can't afford. You've got to be able to afford it, and it cannot change your lifestyle. But it will help you maintain your lifestyle when you become ill. That's the whole point. So some of these plans can pay for services in addition to what's already covered in Medicare. I'm going to say that again. Some of these plans pay for services in addition to what's already covered in Medicare. So my client calls me last week, and she says, Diane, I, um, I had some home health care. I said, did you make a claim? She said, I didn't know I could. You know, they came out that was covered. I said, just because they came out, that allows you to make the claim because as long as you're able to show that they were scheduled on the calendar and what they provided, and it was either the skilled care or, you know, with these particular plans, custodial care can be covered. I said, my gosh, you're going to get paid. She goes, how is that possible? Medicare covered it. I said, because that's the way it works. They pay you when you show them the service is done. And then if you want to have extra services beyond what Medicare does, that's what you would do. You would use the money to fund that. And she said, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And I said, oh my goodness, probably a lot of my clients don't realize that, that that's how it works. But that is how these plans work. So you can have more than one plan. So she asked me, she said, well, you know, Diane, I, I like having um, you know, $112,000 that I can have for home health care. Can I get more? And I said, yeah, we'll just get it with another company. And she said, we can do that. So right now you can do that. So you can have more than one plan for home health care. And a lot of clients do across the country. I'm not just talking to my clients. We're talking about lots of folks have more than one plan for home health care. And you can and you can claim on it also. And so you have you have more than one plan and the plan started over 65, but they can begin as early as age 40. And then depending on the state and the medications that you take, you can attain a zero net cost plan. What? That means you have a premium, but you might not have to pay a uh, for the plan after you get your money back because some of the plans have a give back for the receipts that you can send them for the drug plan. So you take a drug and you send in a receipt to the home health care company and then they send you some money back and sometimes it's up to $600. And if your home health care plan is less than $600 or the same price, you have yourself a zero net cost plan. And depending upon your age and your state and your medications, you can have 278,000 plus dollars in benefits that come to you. It is unfathomable. And most people say, how do they do that? And then I will tell you why and how they do that and how they're able to do that and how long they've been able to do that. And when I tell you this, all of these companies, the top ones, all seven of them that sell these plans, they haven't ever had a rate increase. Doesn't mean they won't have a rate increase. It means they never have had one. So their actuaries really do know what they're doing. And I have more information about that if you'd like it. So let's go on to the next thing. So we have we have the, the short-term um, long, and now we have long-term care. Long-term care, uh, which is a topic that I have 
absolutely loved uh, helping clients with for my gosh, 24 years now, I can't believe it. Um, and planning for it and now also seeing them go through claims and helping the families and helping all of the, the kids of, of clients. Now those kids of uh, to become clients and that kind of thing. And it's one where long-term care is defined as needing to have care for more than 90 days. So if it's less than 90 days, that's short-term care. And a lot of clients say, well, Diane, I have long-term care. Well, yeah, that's fine and great. But if you have a situation that happened like mom and dad did, and that was that mom was trying to get out of the car and uh, we had just gone to Kohl's. <laughs> So we, we said, we're going to Kohl's, we go to Kohl's, we're going bra shopping. And uh, it's so for mom. And so what happened was we decided to go to Sonic. I think it was 104 that day in St. Louis. And so we go to Sonic, we come back. My house is just, you know, five, five houses away from mom and dad. And what happened was mom drops me off. And she looked hot, and but she had her Sonic drink. We're drinking our, you know, our favorite, our cherry limeades. And I said, Mom, have some of your drink. You look hot. You want me to come down to the house and help you with all this? No, I. And she says to me, I, I got this. And I'm like, okay. So um, I go in my house, and she goes down to her house right down the street, the house I grew up in. Everything. She goes into the garage, and uh, she's trying to get the sack from Kohl's with bras in it, of course, out of the car. So she's getting that out of the car. The bra strap of this in the bag gets caught on the shifter in the car. My mom freaks out and she said, I can't get this. And she's yelling for my dad now, Roger, Roger. And dad's upstairs. He hears mom. He comes zooming down the stairs and he sees her and he runs out in between their two cars in, in the, in the garage. So dad's now coming towards her mom's in the front seat and she's yelling for him. And she's got, now she's got her soda and she squeezes it. The soda goes everywhere with that. Dad shuts the door. Mom's now coming out the door. He grabs her hands to steady her. And she grabs his, well, guess where they went? Right on that concrete floor, dad broke a wrist and an elbow and mom broke two elbows. Well, now they're on the floor, okay? And so they're yelling for the neighbor. The neighbor comes over, the neighbor comes to get me. And now we have two ambulances come to get mom and dad. And so they go down to one of the closest closest hospital. I can't even ride in the ambulance with them. They won't let me. I don't know why. And so we go there. I'm following. I go in there. Dad comes out and he says, I'm fine. They're not going to keep me overnight. Why? I don't know. But he said, but they're going to keep your mom overnight. They're worried about your mom. And I said, oh, he said, you know what? We're going to need some help. And I said, okay. And he said, you need to call and you need to start that long-term care policy. I said, okay. I call Jenworth. I love Jenworth, and this is the only only one I'll mention because I've started with them from the from the get go, and they were so funny with me on the phone. They said, "Diane, you do realize that this is not long term for your parents. This is going to be short term. This is going to be less than sixty days." Okay, at that point, Dad had spent so much money on a long term care policy for years, and I went out and had to tell my father, "Dad, they're not they're not going to cover it. It's not long term." It's short term. And he goes, well, when this whole thing is over, after you've been the head dishwasher and your sister has been the head chef for your mother and I, you need to find me some short term insurance. <laughs> so that's how the whole short term insurance thing worked out in my life to tell every single one of my clients about it. And with dad, years ago, they knew they were going to be in the category to where when it comes to a couple. And you'll see this on that quote, when it comes to a couple, one will need long-term care, not both, but one will need it. Mom needed it. So before she passed and uh, dad might need it 
uh, coming up here because he's got a surgery for his eye. Uh, but their dad's now in his 80s and they started at the long-term care when they were in their 60s. But it's never too late to look at it because long-term care can cover home care, adult daycare, assisted living and nursing home care. And then long-term care funding sources can be the VA, Medicaid, your pocket, private plans, we're including long-term care insurance, life insurance. If you're one of those people that says, but I don't want to pay for something and never get the money back. Well, life insurance and annuities have, have a little caveat there where you can, you can get money back, which is pretty amazing these days. And traditional long-term care has that typical 90 day to hundred day elimination period. And that's where mom and dad fell in. You know, when they fell and they needed to have short-term care, they had this, 90 days they had to wait before the policy started. So the short-term plans, they start immediately. And uh, so for the past two decades, then my parents are included in this. And just about everybody I've ever talked to about this is the past two decades, over 20 years, the number one reason people plan for long-term care is they do not wanna be a burden on their spouse or children. And it's not that, I'm saying to my mom and my, or I said to my mom or that I'm saying to my dad now, hey, don't be a burden to me. I'm not saying that to them. My dad is the one where when I call him and I ask him, hey, did you go to this appointment? Did you go to that appointment? Do we need to look at, you know, lower prices for your, um, your insurance or for your medication? He'll, he'll sigh and he'll say, oh, I don't want to bother you, honey. You know, I, I, no, you're not a bother, dad. You know, I love you. And so, it, so I just want you guys to know, as you're listening to this, that if you're in that category that you don't want to be a burden on your spouse or children, you are normal. And that's the number one reason why people look at it, discuss it, and see what the best plan is for them. Because to have a plan is better than to have no plan at all. So next slide. So let's talk about the big C. I hate talking about the big C because mom, uh, mom had cancer and my aunt has had cancer and my other aunt had cancer and it's a hard conversation. But you know, when you look at the statistics, you have this Medicare Advantage plan and you're going to pay 28, 20 percent copay up to the maximum of the pocket. And then Medicare says if you have a supplement, you know, you will 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 help you pay for that and that'll be covered. But there's so much that's not covered because when it comes to insurance, they are not going to provide insurance for something that they can't quantify. They have to be able to quantify it. And with cancer, it's so nebulous. So what they've done is they've looked at what will Medicare do? And the latest and greatest cancer drugs that are typically, they're typically not covered by Part D. And they're listed in the highest, the highest expense category with Medicare. And Medicare biopsies for DNA, the genome sequencing, they start at stages three and four, and they only test 400 genomes. It sounds like a lot, but it's not enough. And that's kind of late in the game, actually. But that's when Medicare has been able to quantify how much more they're going to spend on that particular um, disease at that time. So Medicare does not pay for travel. Um, it, all the providers are limited to your plan. Concierge, those doctors that you're like, oh my gosh, I just found this amazing doctor and the doctor knows they're amazing. And so they call, they, they charge amazing prices and they're called <laughs> concierge doctors and they're proud of themselves and they're proud of their prices too. Um, and uh, they have done wonders and you want them to do wonders for you. So they're not covered. Uh, and then alternative medicine is not covered. Uh, visits to you know places that are might be just brand new and on the cusp of something great, that's not covered by Medicare. And then custodial care at home again is not covered. Now I told you we'd talk about hospice again, and hospice is available when the hospitalist from the hospice company. That's another fancy name for the doctor. Um, and your doctor agree that you'll expire in six months and you show a decline. So with home health care from Medicare, you have to improve 
And with hospice, you've got to show a decline. So let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so how is ancillary insurance filling this gap? Well, we had the prediction was 1.8 million people would have cancer diagnosed as new patients in 2020. We surpassed that. And one in two people will develop cancer in their lifetime. So those that have been free of cancer for five years, good news. You can now apply for a plan and have a cancer policy to fill that gap. And most cancer plans now pay in a lump sum or they pay in an indemnity, which means that money comes directly to you. And that's between the $5,000 amount and the $100,000 amount. And can you have more than one policy? Absolutely. Now in the past, these policies were an up to, so it was for a particular cancer, this is how much you get. And then now it, there's not a description limit, meaning it's a lump sum. The money just comes to you and you can have more than one plan, like I said, and you could also get a plan right now. It's new. It's been on the market for just over a year and it tests 19,000 genomes at stage one. And it has coordinated counseling from that particular, that particular group organization that does the testing for the genomes. So what does that really mean? What it meant to me was when I did that research and have uh, talked with that particular company that offers that, I asked them, I said, with my mom, with her cancer journey, there was a time where she was taking statin drugs and she had neuropathy in her feet and the neuropathy never went away. And they said, oh my God, that's terrible. I said, well, if, I said, let's just say, say if I have something similar like that, and you test my 19,000 genomes and you know my DNA, am I going to have to be a guinea pig like my mom or will we know or have a better idea of what kind of medication my body can withstand so I don't have an adverse reaction like that? And they assured me that the answer was we will have a much better idea because those 19,000 genomes will indicate what is right for you at that time with your body. So it is not something that broke the bank. I just wanted that testing for myself. So here I am, I'm going to admit it. Don't tell anybody, but I'm 50 years old. And I said, I'll get a plan. And I just want the testing. So the testing's a value of like $10,000. And I got a plan that was like $5,000 lump sum. And I said, how much is it going to be? Folks in my state of Missouri, and also, you know, when I'm in South Carolina, because of course I looked at both, because I reside in both places, um, it was one where it's only $28 a month for me. Now, knowing that, you know, my history with my family with cancer, breast cancer especially, that doesn't change my life to have it, but I'm telling you what, it is going to change my life if I find out that I have cancer. So that's the whole point with any of this insurance, that you don't ever get extra insurance unless you can afford it, unless it's going to do what you want it to do, you understand it, and when you need to make a claim, that policy is going to make your life better, and also it's not going to burden the people that you love. So next slide. So we talked about, in summarizing today, we talked about the coverage gaps, and they included the prescription drugs with Medicare versus the private pay. And then we also talked about rehab and skilled nursing facilities. And if you were in original Medicare with a supplement, when hospitalized as observation, you don't want to do that. You want to be an inpatient and push for that. And you want to have probably a plan in your back pocket that would pay for rehab. Extra benefits, we talked about that too. Some plans, on um, the plans on the Advantage side, they come with it. The supplement does not. And the ones that you can double up and triple up on are dental, vision, and hearing, 
Home care is short-term recovery at home. It can start immediately. You can plan for it that way and you can supplement what med Medicare does. Long-term care, it's something to have that conversation and see what strategy works best for you. And cancer, also heart attack and stroke is a lump sum that comes to you. And again, it has to not change your finances, but it, it will benefit your life when you make a claim. So with that, I am just almost four minutes past this hour. <laughs> it's almost right out of an hour. And uh, additional information, you could see, you could go to the government contacting that information at 1-800-MEDICARE and medicare.gov. Don't forget that if you call into the government, you can always have a broker or um, an agent call in with you. You can verify them in and um, then they can ask questions for you if you don't know the questions to ask. I do that a lot. And uh, the Missouri state government, I also do that a lot too, especially for people that want to have, um, they wanna know where they are with their income, if they can qualify for Medicaid and Medicare at the same time. And then there's my information, my website, and then my direct email. And uh, the question that I'm gonna ask all of you is, would you like to continue this conversation? And if you would, please text me yes at my phone number, which is 314-302-5743. And that 302 is my birthday, by the way. So I've had that number for over 25 years. <laughs> Anybody can reach me. So with that, I'll just open it up and see if there's any quick questions. Yvonne has a question. Um, she would like to know, she's turning 65 in June. She, I will have TRICARE for life. Uh, do I need a supplement? So um, it's interesting. You don't need necessarily to have a supplement. What the TRICARE for life is one of those that I mentioned um, kind of earlier in the conversation as uh, always having an SEP. And there is an Advantage plan through three different companies in the St. Louis area and throughout the nation. It depends on you know where you live, but some of them will give you back on your Part B. They'll give you back up to $50 in the St. Louis bi-state area. Um, and it around the country too. And then what also happens is uh, they will include benefits for dental, vision, and hearing, and it's a zero premium. So that's worth a conversation, Yvonne, that we have to see if that would be the best for you or if you're wanting to have um, a, another alternative. But a lot of people will um, go with the extra benefits for zero cost it's a, and also save money. That seems to be the most popular route with those on TRICARE. I look forward to talking to you. Thanks for that question. So we can, you know, if you have further questions, this was recorded today. We will have this available on the Mirowit Center website mirawetcenter.org and um, Diane's information is there. I can send you these PowerPoint presentations or whatever. So if you have questions that um, you need to ask Diane directly, her information is on the on that um, PowerPoint. I can email it to you as well. So however you um, want to connect is would be would be great. So I have a quick question too. I would like to know any aha moments that people had where I was talking and you thought, what in the world? I've never heard that before. Did anybody have those moments? I'm not, I'm not sure there's um, no one's responding at the moment. Judy, did you have any of those? Well, you know, the, you know, I never realized that you could have more than one like drug or vision or hearing. I mean, you know, you, you go, oh, let's see, which one should I pick? And you look at the popular dental plans, for instance, and you think, okay, I'll pick that one. I never knew you could have more than one. 
Yeah, it was interesting this past week, um, one of my clients called me and she said, oh, Diane, I have this one plan, you know, they take it nationwide and it's from my employer. So when I retire, I'm going to be able to keep that um, dental insurance. And I said, oh, and you don't have to keep the medical. I said, that's fabulous. I said, just keep the dental insurance. And she said, well, what if some, what if another um, bill comes in that I need to pay or something else that I need to do for my teeth. And I said, well, that's when you call me and we add another plan. <laughs> She's like, really? I said, yeah, we just time it. It's all good. So yeah. Well, so I, I appreciate. Yeah. 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 That was never new. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, last year I had a tooth that broke and I was like right in the middle of uh, a movie. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know. And so, yeah, it's like, it was, I was happy to have my dental plan, but you uh -huh. know, it's like, well, it only covers this much. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I'll call Diane. <laughs> well, thank She'll you so much. This. Thank you oh so much. Gosh. And it's such a pleasure. You. Yeah. And yeah, um, just, just, please, everybody don't keep me a secret. Let me know who I'm supposed to help next with this information it is my pleasure thank, thank you, you everyone so much. thank you so much diane and look forward to seeing you again and talking with you and mirwood center just um enjoys your expertise and all your help you've provided thank you thank you thank you it is my pleasure and you're such a doll judy thanks so much okay you too <laughs> i'll see ya all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.